Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us um, for this lecture um, in relation to uh, the Cantate Domino exhibition at Lambeth Palace Library, with a specific focus on fragments of music in book bindings at the library. Um, Mary Clayton Kastenholtz is going to be giving the lecture. She is one of the printed books catalogers here at the library, and she is the curator of our exhibition. Um, which is currently on, and I encourage you to come and see it. Um, Mary, over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tal, for that introduction uh, and to the Society for inviting me to speak today. This presentation will be exploring waste fragments containing music, both printed and manuscript, found in early modern book bindings at Lambeth Palace Library. As Tal mentioned, I'm a printed books cataloger at the library, but more relevantly have recently curated an exhibition highlighting musical treasures from our collection in which I have two cases discussing music preserved by chance, either as waste or as annotation. The exhibition remains open for one more week. Uh, it will close on the 18th of September. So if this sounds of interest to you, I hope you may come and visit. Researching for and curating the exhibition has given me an opportunity to investigate and reflect on music fragments held in the library in a more concentrated way than I had previously been able to, and it is some of these reflections that I am going to share with you in the next few minutes. I will discuss how my colleagues and I have been finding and recording fragments of music waste in our early printed books, explore some of the sorts of information that seem particularly useful to include when cataloguing, and finally, describe some of our plans to promote and publicize examples of music waste in the Lambeth collections moving forward. Manuscript and print fragments used as waste are a common sight in early modern book bindings. In many ways, music waste is no different to other sorts of waste, but there is particular interest in fragments within musicological circles, and there are particular details of music waste relevant to researchers in this area that might be less obvious to those less familiar with medieval and early modern music notation. In his influential survey of paste downs in Oxford bindings, Neil Kerr suggested that the reuse, particularly of medieval manuscript leaves as waste in printed books, was a predominantly 16th century phenomenon for English bindings being particularly prevalent up to 1570. Waste, including music waste, can also be found in the bindings of manuscripts before and during the 16th century, but I am going to narrow my focus to examples on printed books, as this is the collection I predominantly work with. Examples of music waste in 16th century printed books at Lambeth have, to date, appeared only sporadically in our catalogue records. The main reason for this oversight is that a high proportion of our records for early printed books are still just digitised versions of the old cards from the card catalogue. These older records are sparsely detailed and do not meet modern standards of description. We are in the beginning stages of rectifying this, but the effective recataloguing of the nearly 6,000 books printed before 1600, which we hold, is a daunting prospect and will take time. I should specify that this 6,000 pre-1600 books that I enumerate is exclusive of the Sion College collection, which is held at Lambeth and which has been in a process of comprehensive recataloguing since its arrival with us in 1996. The decision was made at the time of transfer not to digitize the Sion card catalog, instead individually recataloguing the items from scratch. Thus, all Scion records that appear on our online catalog have been created to the proper standard and look a lot nicer than many of the old Lambeth records. To date, around 20,000 titles out of the approximately 60,000 books published before 1830 have been processed. Since the cataloging of the Scion collection has been broadly prioritized by date, the likelihood of stumbling across examples of manuscript waste is diminishing as we continue, but it is not gone. I was able to feature in my exhibition an example of waste identified and cataloged by one of my colleagues earlier this year and pictured here. You can see that it is a quarter bound uh, in alum, alum Todd pigskin over a board which has been covered in a piece of reused parchment with music. The roll on the pigskin conveniently includes the date of 1562 uh, and the music, which is a hymn to the Virgin Mary, is likely a couple centuries older. Returning to the main Lambeth collections, as a precursor to more comprehensive catalogue improvements, over the past few years, the printed books team have been doing a full and detailed shelf check of our early printed collections. 
This entails checking that the items on the shelf match title and class mark with what we have on the catalog and noting down particular issues or features of interest. This process will allow us to prioritize important, interesting or confusing items for earlier recataloging, bindings featuring waste being very much included within the category of interesting. We have so far noted around 100 examples of waste of varying descriptions in our volumes. Out of those 100 or so, about 12 include music. We still have one of our largest sequences remaining to check, which includes around 3,000 books printed before 1600. So it feels probable that we will flag quite a few more examples of waste as we carry on. So pictured on screen are a couple of examples of things we've come across in the shelf checking. An example of printed music waste in the upper left, uh, facing the title page, and in the lower right, something that is not music, but was an unexpected discovery of a fairly descriptive early modern insult. There are a number of subsets of music waste that we find in our bindings that fit into different areas of interest and research. The largest category we find is fragments of liturgical music taken from missals, breviaries, antiphonals, and graduals across various centuries. Neil Kerr noted a particular tendency for medieval manuscript liturgical books to find their way into English bindings after 1540, a logical consequence of the Reformation. Music waste from liturgical books is also present before and after the 1540s and will have different trends in different countries. As well as potential obsolescence, either from religious reformation or other causes, liturgical books also have a practical advantage of generally being large and therefore easier to reuse in covers. Pictured here is a leaf of a liturgical manuscript that has been used as a limp parchment wrapper. Uh, the single leaf of a large format book can easily cover a small quarto text block. Though they are prevalent, fragments of liturgical book are less likely to include new discoveries of music. Many of the chant melodies seem to have been fairly standardized within medieval uses, particularly the use of Sarum or Salisbury. Still, giving as much detail as possible on the fragment can flag whether a particular exemplar is likely to be of interest to researchers. I will say more on this later. Among fragments that seem to be of particular interest to scholars, fragments of polyphony seem to loom large. Polyphony is music in which more than one vocal melodic line is sung concurrently. It is a style of music that broadly arose in the 13th century and was very popular through the 16th across Europe. But the sources for polyphonic music are few and far between, with a large number of pieces surviving in only one source or in fragmentary form. Though not strictly a binding fragment, we have an interesting and unique example of early 13th century polyphony preserved in a miscellany. It is a palimpsest. Three hymns to the Virgin Mary survive on the recto and on the verso, a fourth hymn has been scraped off and replaced by an exposition on the seven deadly sins. And that's what you can see on screen. It is generally suggested that polyphonic works were ripe to be broken apart and reused because the music became stylistically outdated over time, or in the case of early 16th century English polyphony, no longer compatible with Reformation liturgies. At this point, binding fragments become hugely important for musicological study. One of the most significant sources for earlier English polyphonic music dating to the 13th and 14th centuries survives solely as a fortuitously concentrated set of fragments in Worcester Cathedral. The original volumes of music were broken up likely in the 1520s, but most remained in the cathedral's library on an assortment of bindings, and so substantial study and digital reconstruction of the original work has been possible. And one of these Worcester fragments I have displayed on screen. At Lambeth, we have some interesting examples of 16th century polyphony used as waste. Uh, as a particularly nice exemplar, fragments of polyphony in the binding of this processional of 1545 uh, and a related volume in Paris helped a scholar to redate a famous composition by Thomas Tallis, his O Sacrum Convivium, nearly a decade earlier than had previously been thought, which has prompted some rethinking on the evolution of that composer's style over time. Another seeming area of interest to music researchers is early music, predating the use of stave lines. Again, such early music seems to be rare in its survival and frequently only survives as fragments. The fragment I'm showing on screen is 
uh, um, on a missal printed in 1499, but has a much earlier sliver of text and music used in its binding. Uh, you can also see a shadow from the fuller sheet on the board. Wonder if digital magic could uh, make that show up a bit better. I would guess that the music on this fragment is from the 10th century. As a final category of music fragment, we also find sheets of printed music used as waste. These can comprise either polyphonic or liturgical music. Printed fragments are unlikely to be unique, but they are frequently rare and can be of interest. I'm showing on screen a personal favorite, uh, a leaf from the Liber Cantiona Sacrarum Book 4, printed in 1555 or 1556 in Louvain. Uh, it's an uncut page, and the printer sheets have been used as end papers on several volumes of a set of works of Martin Luther. Having outlined that there are different types of music that can be found as fragments of differing interest to researchers, how can we describe fragments of waste in a way that accurately signposts them? How much detail can be included in a record or description is of course dependent on the time and expertise of the describer. But I would say that the description does not require having a high level of expertise on music, as there are several simple details that, if included, will help a researcher determine if a piece of music is likely to be of interest to them. Firstly, and most obviously, is the fragment manuscript or printed. Does the stave have four lines or five, or does it have no stave? Are the notes round or square? To a researcher, these elements are particularly relevant. Round notation on a staff tends to be later and is more likely to be polyphonic music, whereas square notation on a four-line stave is almost certainly from a liturgical book. Examples that seem to be from a litur liturgical book can sometimes be quite readily identified for the type of book. If it's music only, it's likely from an antiphoner or gradual. If it has music and text, it's likely from a missal or a breviary. The database Cantus has a hugely handy search function where if you can read the start of a piece of chant text-wise, it can tell you which service it relates to and which sort of book it has come from. The example I'm showing on screen has square notation and it's on a four-line stave. It has elements of rubrication and it's music only. So from those details, I'm gonna guess that it's from a liturgical book, a gradual or an antiphoner. And from then typing the text into the Cantus database, this narrowed down the search to an antiphoner. My colleagues with more manuscript experience identified the hand for the text as likely 14th century. And so we were able to expand a description that was formerly manuscript music fragment into something much more useful for reference. As an example of a real inquiry, one of the most interesting questions I've helped with was a researcher asking about music waste specifically in spear ink bindings. The researcher had found some fragments from a polyphonic choir book and at least one spear ink, and so seemed to be contacting institutions with spear inks recorded in their catalog to see if there were any more choir book fragments and whether there would be a chance of reconstructing any of the choir book that had passed through that workshop. We were able to pull our examples of spear inks and found a couple examples of music in bindings, but it was solely music on four line stave, therefore likely from a missal or a breviary. Notation styles like text scripts and decoration styles changed over time, and it doesn't take too long to recognize the differences between them, but it does require a level of expertise and engagement. It's often a combination of many elements that allow a music fragment to be identified and dated. The fragment I've shown on screen here would be very difficult to describe in detail without that description quickly becoming confusing. You've got examples of square notation, round notation, things crossed out, there's a lot going on. Any description is immensely strengthened by the inclusion of a picture, and digitized versions of fragments also seem to be the best way to excite enthusiasm and engagement with the fragments, which brings me to my final point. What we at Lambeth are hoping we might do with the fragments of waste generally, and music waste specifically, that we have been finding. There are at present two main databases that include music fragments. One is Diam, the Digital Image Archive of Medieval Music which had, has records of musical source, sources across a huge number of institutions. This resource includes images of both intact sources and fragments. In the past, representatives of Diam have photographed holdings at Lambeth, 
including a couple of fragments in early printed books, which you can see as the first two examples on this list on the left-hand side. But I've included on the right, uh, all of the examples that I have included in this presentation that are not recorded on Diam, but may be uh, viable to include in that database. The second main database that includes musical fragments is the Fragmentarium, which bills itself as a digital research laboratory for medieval music manuscript, uh, me medieval music frag blah, medieval manuscript fragments, my apologies. Individual records on this database have an image and several details of production and content, and the level of detail varies significantly across records from different institutions. Ultimately, it would be wonderful to be able to include fragments found in the Lambeth collections to either or both of the databases I have mentioned, but doing so would take time and resource, particularly for the digital imaging. A couple of my colleagues are leading on looking into possibly piloting something like the Fragmentarium database of our own, with a view to ultimately contributing to the larger database directly. There are some technical requirements of the larger database, which would be a barrier to beginning to contribute right away to the larger database, which is why we are thinking of starting with something in-house that we can then transfer over when we have the means. As we continue to find examples of music waste within our collections, we have a continuing opportunity to alert researchers to our interesting holdings. To facilitate this, we are looking to signpost as clearly as possible and publicize as widely as possible the fragments that we have. The inclusion of fragments in the library's music exhibition has, I hope, gone some way towards alerting researchers and the public to their existence. And the intended online presence for our manuscript fragments, including music fragments, will hopefully present our holdings to a wider interested audience. As we move forward, we may uncover unique treasures or just liturgical fragments. Either way, fragments of music form an interesting and beautiful subset of binding ways, which it has been a pleasure to discover and explore. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary. That was really, really interesting and beautiful examples that we got to look at. Um, are there any questions from anyone? Uh, so Jody, oh no, uh, Ted is asking, what is a spear ink binding? My apologies, I should have explained that. Um, spear ink was a particular binder. I think he was active in Cambridge um, and it's a role that can be uh, identified from the Oldham um, resource uh, from the 1960s. Um, and there's been particular interest in him as a binder, uh, as a prestigious one. So he tends to show up in catalogues where perhaps other more unknown London number 13 um, might not have been included in a record. So um, looking looking through the bindings to then find something else about the workshop. Very interesting. Um, Megan has asked how much appetite is there with choirs in performing music from these fragments? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think there would be potential interest in in performing from fragments. Um, the problem is when you don't have the full piece. Um, so, for example, the inquiry that we had about the the spear ink person was looking for a choir book. So the the two main ways that you find polyphonic music are in a choir book and a part book. In a choir book, you have every melodic line. Uh, recorded together. And so if you've got a few leaves of that, you might well have a full piece. Um, if you've got bits of a part book, then you've only got the alto line or the bass line um, of a work. And there are scholars who can reconstruct based on stylistic knowledge um, how that piece is likely to have sounded. But unless you've got a full set of part books, you're unlikely to be able to reconstruct those pieces. Um, in terms of the liturgical chant, that tends to be um, existing in, in fully formed uh, liturgical books still. So you wouldn't necessarily need to perform from the fragments, uh, but it would theoretically be possible if you had enough. Um, are there, do you know of any researchers using these databases and, and doing any of that research? 
Uh, using the databases, absolutely. So I mentioned the Worcester fragments, and that is something that has been, it was digitally reconstructed from the fragments found in the bindings. Um, and if you go on YouTube and search for Worcester fragments, you'll find recordings that have been made of that. And that's very early 13th and 14th century polyphony. So really interesting. Fantastic. Um, any Any last questions? Thank you so much, Mary. Really appreciate this. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, and um, as I said, the, the talk was recorded. So um, we're going to try to put that on the Society of Bookbinders website and um, also uh, the Lambeth Palace social media, YouTube, etc. So that this can be shared out further and um, hopefully more manuscript wastes can be found and studied and researched and used and all those good things. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye everyone.